Hi guys, it's Cindy Leach, your polymer clay tutor, and today's studio tip, I'm going to show you a neat little tip for making a tape handle when you're sanding small items. Now this tip could be used for sanding any kind of small item, but we're going to be talking specifically about sanding polymer clay or and polymer clay beads. So, um, now you may know that um, sanding can really benefit several types of polymer clay projects. Sometimes it's for the look. For example, I'll show you on this bead here, I've got a hollow lentil bead that has been sanded on one side and not on the other so that I could show you the difference between sanded and unsanded. So this is sand, unsanded, this is sanded. And you can really see the sanded one is not only um, uh, shiny and polished and everything, but it feels smooth. The colors look richer and, and especially this particular technique that has a lot of um, mica particled uh, pearl clays in it, it really gives a lot more depth to it than the unsanded side. But then there's other cases where you need the sanding for a structural reason. And that's also the case with these hollow lentil beads. Um, in this case, the, the bead is made in two halves and then you need to sand the inside area here so that the two halves sit together nicely. If you don't sand them, you get gaps and bumps and a very unprofessional looking fit. Now, um, actually this is a technique that I teach in a, um, one of my paid tutorials. I'll leave a link for it. It's called um, the Reptile Hollow Lentil Bead um, neck wire tutorial where you actually, I will show you right from the beginning how to make the cane that this reptile cane here. Um, you can do it in different colors, but I've got it in a green, gold, and kind of blue color combination. And then I'll show you how to make the lentil beads, which are all baked onto one of these um, hollow bead makers that Sculpey has designed. And then when those pieces are baked, you sand them. And I'm going to show you a little sanding tip here. And then it's, it's all put together and even show you how to make the neck wire. So that's a very cool tutorial. But one of the little tips that I have in that tutorial is for when you need to go sand these tiny little pieces. Now you can imagine, I mean, th these larger ones aren't too bad, but when you go to sand some of these tiny little pieces like this and try to get that flat side on this side, your fingers are in the way. It's very tricky to do. So a, a neat little tip is to take a piece of tape. Um, now I've got some pretty uh, bright colored scotch tape. Um, it, I chose this one because it was easier for you to see. But um, you'll want to use any kind of scotch tape, something that can handle going into the water because you're going to be sanding in the water. And this one here is a little bit wide for this tiny little piece if I try to put it on there. So I'm just going to rip it down the length ways or hopefully I'll be able to rip it. I did before. Yeah, there we go. Um, then what I can do is take this. Now I want to sand the underside, so I'm just going to make a little handle. Now you want to do this on your bead when it's dry, and this could work for any kind of shape that you were working on. And then I'm just making a little loop here, and I'm going to pinch it together so I have something to grab onto. Now if your bead is really dry, then you can stick the tape to it quite nicely. Washi tape isn't going to be your best bet for this because washi tape, first of all, doesn't have a very strong glue. And another thing is that it's often made of tissue paper, so it would probably fall apart in the water. But you can make little handles like that. Now I'm going to make a, a little bit bigger one for the, for the, a bigger one to show you the sand so that you can see it better. It's going to be tricky if, uh, if I show you on that little guy. My fingers will be in the way. So you can just make a little handle like this, stick it on your piece, and have something to grab onto. So this would also be work, work if you were going to use um, to sand some little wooden pieces and things too. It's a neat little trick. Now, um, as far as sanding goes, um, I've talked about this lots of times. There's lots of power methods of sanding, but there's also great uh, just uh, hand sanding techniques. Now these are sandpapers that I got in the automotive section and you can usually see like on some of these even have uh, pictures of cars and stuff on them. 
Uh, I got mine at Canadian Tire, but that's because I'm in Canada. <laughs> Many of you are not. So wherever you would buy um, uh, body work or sanding supplies, sometimes at Walmart and all kinds of places. But I've got them in lots of different grits. I've got 220 grit, which is the um, uh, coarser grit. Then I've got 400, 600, 800, and 1,000. If you can get it, you can sometimes get up to 2,000 and 3,000 grit. Um, but the higher the number, the, the finer the grit. But I'm going to use a little piece of the 400 grit. Just throw it into my water here. I put a shallow one so that you could see into it. And I'm going to put a drop of dish soap in the water. And that will help with the sanding. Um, it helps get the dust away from the from the sandpaper and it helps keep it cleaner and then I just take my little piece where with the little handle and just sand under the water and you can do this really quite quickly just back and forth sanding away um, you can you don't have to do uh, wet sanding but it's much nicer for polymer clay because the polymer clay gets right into the little um, the little uh, grits of sandpaper and can clog it up really fast because it's such a fine powder. But that's how that's my little tip for um, holding on to small items. This would work for little round um, beads, any kind of small item that you need to sand. And this, even if you it has to get wet, it, this will still work. Alrighty, so I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, do let us know if you like this video. And if you have a technique you don't understand, a product you would like to learn more about, or any kind of polymer clay related question, then, and make sure to check all of our videos because we've done hundreds of videos. So we might have done a video on it already for you. But if not, make a suggestion and we'll see what we can do about making a video for you. All right, so we'll see you next time and bye for now. Mm -hmm.